I first started working in biotech almost five years ago and my first ever role was as a medical laboratory scientist or a laboratory technologist. If you've ever been interested in working behind the scenes to analyze medical tests and help doctors diagnose diseases, this might be a field of interest for you. In this video, we're diving into what a clinical laboratory scientist does, where they work, how to become one, and what type of salary you can expect. So let's get into this video. A clinical laboratory scientist or also known as a medical laboratory scientist or a laboratory technologist is a trained professional who is performing laboratory tests and these tests can revolve around disease detection, monitoring effectiveness of medical treatments, or even medical research. Some common patient specimens that are analyzed by laboratory technologists are blood, urine, tissue, and other bodily fluids and this helps doctors make informed decisions for their patients. A lot of people refer to laboratory technologists as in hidden heroes of healthcare because they aren't customer facing and so they aren't working with patients face to face but they are doing a a lot of behind the scene work that helps benefit the patient. All of the positions that I have held thus far have mainly dealt with analyzing blood samples from patients and using those samples for MRD testing to monitor effective treatments in the field of oncology. So what are some of the key responsibilities of a clinical laboratory scientist on a day to day? This is obviously going to vary depending on which company you're working at, the type of setting, your experience and your role. But for the most part, you can expect some common things between it. So some of the key responsibilities will be conducting complex tests on patient samples such as tissue and blood, operating and maintaining sophisticated lab equipment, identifying infections, diseases, and abnormalities, interpreting test results and reporting them back to doctors, ensuring quality control and following strict safety protocols, and sometimes specializing areas like microbiology, hematology, or immunology. Like I said, for me, I have been working in oncology for the past five years. As a clinical laboratory scientist, you can work in a variety of settings as I mentioned previously. So some of those places include hospitals, diagnostic laboratories, research institutions, pharmaceutical companies, public health organizations, forensic labs, and also universities and teaching hospitals as this field is pretty flexible and there's numerous places where you could work. All right, so what type of education and training do you need to become a clinical laboratory scientist? This is gonna vary by country, by region, by state, by company that you work for. So it's something that you'll definitely have to look into just depending on where you are if you decide to go down this career pathway. But some of the things you commonly need are a bachelor's degree, and medical laboratory science, biology, chemistry, or another related life sciences field. You'll need some type of training or internship. The training can come informally through your undergrad degree or it can come externally, whichever you prefer or you think benefits you the most. And you might need a certification. Again, this is gonna vary by country. In the US, it is the ASCP certification, American Society for Clinical Pathology. And not every state in the United States requires that specific certification. So I get asked this question a lot about the exam and how to prepare and how to pass it and things like that. I do not have an ASCP cert. The state that I live in does not require one. The company that I work for does not require one. Now, just because you live in a state that does not require an ASCP does not mean that companies that operate in that state will not require you to have one. So again, it's just some type of research that you're gonna have to do if you're interested in pursuing this career. I wanna quickly talk about the difference between a laboratory technologist and a laboratory technician. A lot of times you may hear those two terms used interchangeably, but they are technically different roles. A clinical laboratory technologist or scientist has a bachelor's degree and performs more complex testing and can also supervise technicians. Whereas a laboratory technician normally has like an associate's degree and is performing more routine or basic lab tests and again, may be under the supervision of a technologist. Now that's not to say a laboratory technician is a lesser role or less important than a laboratory technologist. I actually think a laboratory technician role is a great stepping stone to even see if you do wanna pursue this pathway. It's like a good way to get your feet wet and figure out if this field is for you. And lastly, let's talk about the salary or financial aspect of being a clinical laboratory technologist. So in the United States, the average salary for a clinical laboratory technologist ranges between $55,000 and $90,000 a year. This can obviously range depending on your setting 
gaining your experience. Entry level can start around 50,000 to 55,000. And if you're in a higher role, such as a managerial role, you could be making over $100,000 annually. So again, this just depends on experience and if you are in some type of specialized field and your company where you live at and things like that. And when it comes to career growth, there is a lot of growth and job stability in this field. You can advance to things again like a manager, a specialized field such as molecular oncology or even transition into teaching or research type of roles. So there are many pathways that you can take with this field and the more you work in this field and the more people you know and more exposure you gain to different types of roles in this field, you may find yourself wanting to transition out of the lab and into other positions again like a manager. Maybe you want to work in QA which is quality assurance. You can do procedural writing. You might want to be customer facing if you are in some type of molecular diagnostics company. With my current position, I'm not really hands-on in the lab that much. The main things that I take care of are procedural writing, so writing any new procedures that come to the lab and passing it on to the laboratory technologist, doing quality control testing, so any QC testing that needs to be done, I make sure that we have all the things for it, I write the protocols for them, I make documentation to be carried out in the lab, and analyze the results when they are finished doing the testing. And the other thing I do is a bunch of inventory and things like that, but I can talk about that in a different video. But as you gain more experience and meet more people, again, you may transition to things more outside the lab and being less hands-on, but still in the same type of laboratory medical environment. So that is a quick rundown of a clinical laboratory scientist and the role they play in healthcare and ensuring proper diagnoses and advancing medical research. So if you are interested in science and problem solving and making a difference in people's lives, Lives, even though you may not be customer facing or patient facing, this might be the career for you. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Leave a comment if you have any questions or if you're considering pursuing this career field yourself. And I will see you guys in the next video.